Hey guys, Farrell here. Today I wanted to discuss something that I'm asked quite a lot in the comments. What lens do I recommend for a first time Fuji user? You ready? Let's go. So when I first became a Fujifilm user eight years ago with the X-Pro1, the only lens I had was the 35mm f1.4. And whilst that might be my favourite lens, it's not the one that I would recommend for people picking up a Fujifilm camera for the first time. Normally, I'm a prime shooter, but more recently I've got into zooms a little bit more. The 35mm, as good as it is, is not the lens that I would recommend for first-time Fujifilm users. Those that have used it know it can be quite slow and not always the most accurate in terms of focus. We use it for its magical rendering. Now this isn't a video about the 35mm. Don't worry, that will be coming soon. Subscribe for more content. Now what you ideally want when you're coming into the Fujifilm system is something that's going to give you a lot of flexibility, but also great image quality. That's why we're here, right? Now I have tried a few Fujifilm lenses. I've got the 35mm f1.4, as previously mentioned. I've had the 90mm f2, easily one of the sharpest lenses I've ever shot. I've had the 18-55 f2.8 to f4. And the lens that I'm going to recommend is none of these. It's also not a prime. To make things even more different, it's also not a Fujifilm lens. It's actually a Sigma lens. Now, I know this is going to trigger a lot of Fujifilm fanboys out there, but the lens that I recommend for first time Fujifilm users is actually the Sigma 18mm to 50 f2.8. This lens is fantastic, and it's actually the lens that this video is currently being shot on. Let's go through the pros and the cons, and the maybe in between point that you might not consider. I certainly didn't. So, the pros. This lens has a constant f2.8 aperture all the way through the range, from 18 all the way to 50. That can't be said for the Fujifilm 18 to 55 f2.8 to f4. This lens will stay at that f2.8 all the way through, which means it's great for low light shooting, and you're always going to get some separation from your subject. What's great about this is you can shoot at f2.8 and it will be relatively sharp all the way through the range, but mostly pin sharp straight in the middle. Now I'm not a pixel peeper, never have been, never will be, ain't got the time for it. But I've used this for portraits and landscape shots. I've used it for a wide range of things over the last six months, including all of my travel. There have been some trips where it's been the only lens that I've actually taken with me due to its size and performance. Now for clarity's sake, I feel it's important to mention that I bought this lens with my own money for my own intended use. And I actually didn't consider doing a review on this until this week when I started getting back into making YouTube videos. It's a very small lens. It fits very nicely on the X-Pro bodies. It fits very nicely on my newly acquired X-T4. But most of its use was actually previously on my X-S10. The lens hood is a little on the large side, but if you prefer, this can be removed. Now another pro is that the focus is dead silent and very, very accurate. And to put my money where my mouth is, so to speak, I actually chose this and the 35mm 1.4 to be the only two lenses used at my wedding. Another pro for me is that this lens is weather sealed. If I'm traveling and the weather's crap, which often it is for me, then it does mean that I can leave this lens on and have no concerns about having it out in the open, exposed to the elements. I've had this thing dripping with water and I've had no issues. Another pro, but to me this doesn't matter as much, but I do feel I have to bring it up, is that this lens is made in Japan. Now, the reason that I mention this is there have been some issues recently that people have had with certain Fujifilm branded products being made in Fujifilm's own Chinese factory. Now, I use an X-T4. That camera is actually one of the ones made in China. I have looked at the steps involved between building in their Japanese plan and their Chinese plan, and there are some strict policies that they have to follow, so I'm not concerned about their build quality. That said, I know some people are. So to get a Japanese-made lens, for some people, that will be a pro. Now, the next pro I want to bring forward for this camera is that actually it is one of the best vlogging lenses in Fujifilm's line. I've had so many great selfies with my partner in this, and we've done a little bit of light vlogging while we've been up in the mountains. And I can say it's performed admirably. 
Now this does of course lead us on to some of the negatives and there are a few that I feel we have to discuss. The build quality, while fantastic and certainly a heavy duty style plastic, it's not full metal construction that some people do associate with some of the Fujifilm lenses. Now for me, I have thrown this lens about a bit, not shown it too much love, and I'm not concerned about the build quality, but I still feel I have to mention it to you guys. Another con is that there's no aperture ring. Now for some people this will be a big issue and it's definitely one of the reasons people get into the Fujifilm line and I do understand that. I personally love the buttons and dials, it's a, a big thing for me. But when it comes to aperture, I don't have an issue adjusting this on the camera anyway. It's nice and quick and it doesn't slow my process down. Now the third con, and this can be a big one depending on what model of Fujifilm camera you decide to purchase, is that there is no optical image stabilization built into this lens. Now if you're using one of the later Fujifilm bodies with inbuilt stabilization, such as the X-T4 or the X-S10, this definitely isn't going to become an issue for you. If you are using one of the bodies without stabilization, such as an X-Pro, this might be a big con to consider. Obviously, you can shoot at a higher burst rate with a higher shutter speed, especially because that low f-stop allows it, but still, this could be a turning point for some people. Now again, I've not had this issue because I've been using the XS10 and the XT4. Now my final con slash pro is a little bit of a different one. It is the way in which the camera zooms. Now my good friend Joe made me aware of this because he's used to power zoom lenses. And I've previously had the 15 to 45 power zoom lens. I didn't include that one in my list earlier. So for me, I don't actually like power zoom. I like being able to zoom with my hand to the point that I require and stop in there to take a great image. Or if I'm shooting video, I like to have it zoomed in at the distance that I like set. Now for my friend Joe, he actually uses power zoom in his videos. He uses it in camera so that he can get a slow crop in onto his subject. This isn't something I had considered because when I'm shooting video, I usually shoot locked at the widest point for that vlogging effect. But this is something to consider. For photography, I think it's much better to have a manual zoom, but for video, I think both can be argued. Now the Sigma comes in at 429 pounds which I think is an absolute steal for a very very high quality piece of glass that will cover a good standard zoom range and give you a great aperture. It's the perfect travel companion and to prove so, again, I've taken this on holidays as the solo lens of the trip. Now for comparison's sake, the Fujifilm lens, which does include the optical image stabilisation, does come in at a whopping RRP of £719 almost 300 pounds difference. But I do think if you can live without the stabilization, this is the glass to go for. Obviously, you can pick up both of these lenses on the used market already. I do think they're both worth looking into, but having owned both, I just feel it's worth putting my perspective out there that if I was going to recommend one lens to a new Fujifilm user to get great images on, give them some room to play with, you know, you could lock this out at 18 and treat it like a prime, you could lock it at 50 and treat it like an f2.8 prime, but to have that constant f2.8 aperture all the way through that great weather ceiling. For me, this is my go-to lens and it will always be in my kit bag. I think this is an absolute gem for Fujifilm users, new and old. And like I say, I've been using them for eight years and I've had this lens for six months and it has changed photography for me. It has definitely made it a lot nicer to just take this and one of my favorite primes and just go around not really worrying about anything else. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Peace.